Again, he has lacked Grand Park. Again, you think you've got two downs to get a yard here if you're the Colts. Woods the man in motion. Again, it's Goodson, and Goodson dives. Right behind Woods. Touchdown. Right behind Woods. Former Iowa Hawkeye finds the painted turf, and it's back to a one score. Spencer Schrader connects on the extra point. Goodson trying to make this roster for a second. Can Schrader edge kick, see to the edge. Now you, you set the edge over there, but back sides, which you can't block. A JK Fernia amongst those in to make the play. Well, the scoring drive for the Indianapolis Colts, nine plays and 72 yards, took three minutes and 40 seconds. That is our Citizens Energy Group scoring recap. Let's get it to Lara Overton for our next Oilers Sideline Report. Nobody happier to see a couple of Colts rushing touchdowns than Jonathan Taylor. JT, earlier in the week, Shane said that maybe a handful of starters who wouldn't play today. How much did you campaign to want to get out here this afternoon? Yeah, it's always nice to come out, knock the rust off, um, get some actual live game reps with your guys. I know we've been competing against one another for the past few weeks, but it's always nice to go and come together and now start competing against people you don't know. After all the time that you've had in training camp with Anthony Richardson, something that we only saw a handful of times during the last regular season, what is this offense starting to look like between the two of you, that 5-2-8 connection? Definitely starting to come together, especially as far as our communication. I think that's going to be a big advantage for us this year, especially being a group that kind of everybody's pretty much back with just a couple new pieces. Um, so I think the communication is going to be a big advantage for us, and I can't wait to put it on display this season. How beneficial is all the continuity that you guys have in particular? Anthony coming back a second year with Shane Steichen and so much of this roster back from 23. I think it's huge, um, but I also think, like I mentioned, we have to make it an advantage for us. Um, there's a lot of turnover in this league, so anytime you can keep that continuity together, it's always a big plus because now you're able to just build upon the relationships and kind of the teamwork that you built the previous year. Hey, we're going to let you get back over there to get coach up these running backs, get a couple more scores before we end this fourth quarter, all right? De definitely. Hopefully we hopefully we get two more touchdowns that will put us up. But so far, we've had a great day on the ground. we got to keep going. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Lara, thank you. JT, thank you. Third down and eight for Wilson. The Broncos catch made. And first down, Tutsi in on the tackle. Grab for the Broncos made by Brandon Johnson. Yeah, a little soft there on third and, and eight, you know. Like to be a little bit more clamp on the coverage. On the second down, while we were doing the interview, we had a really good coverage over there, Simpson, on the nine route, on the go route. Because you're looking at a kid that's really learning how to play corner again, so you kind of got to stay with him a little bit and see what he can and can't do. On the handoff, oh, it's Wilson. He'll keep. And Wilson taken down Micah Abraham with the tackle for loss. Yeah, it's good to see these two draft picks are, you know, their third day, their third day draft picks, but they're showing up pretty good. What you what you see here is Abraham. You know, that, that, that's a picture perfect tackling right there. Loss of two on the play, second and a dozen. Those fans getting into this, making some noise here in the fourth quarter. Land applies pressure. Hold will be called. Wilson yeah. will bounce yeah. out of bounds, but and I, I think that's an important play right here. He talk about fourth quarter importance. Holding offense number 54. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replace second down. Jonah Laulu forced that hold by Denver. Yeah, and and Isaiah Land number 55 may be a factor before this is over. See how he's right there on the quarterback. Then you get the hole by Lualu. But the thing about land, particularly with Abu Khan out, that opens up a bit of an extra spot on the edge. Land is a guy that had phenomenal numbers at Florida AM, has terrific ability off the edge. The wave by the five. Wave by the Cowboys in a training camp last year, picked up by the Colts the very next day. Second and a ways. Catch made, that's Beatty. Tackled almost immediately. I want to make sure we see about that young man. That is Craig Young from Fort Wayne Wayne High School that makes the tackle after a gain of six. Yeah, good playing space there. Ball's thrown in the flat. Again, if you watch Land, Land had a good inside move there. Forced Wilson out of the pocket. 
You know, I don't want to get on a campaign here, but this is one of those guys in that fourth quarter where this game has great importance. Young played collegially both Ohio State and Kansas, was a outstanding high school basketball player as well as being a tremendous football player for the Generals up in Fort Wayne. Third and long. Here comes Levi Bell. Good find, but well shy of the first down marker. Ball popped free. It's going to be ruled as an incomplete pass. And Colts reserves on defense do their job and get a start. Yeah, this is Absolutely. a Venturi who did play at Northwestern, <laughs> by the way, just did play in the Big Ten, just to point that out. Outstanding kick. Gould will field all the way back to the five and cannot turn the corner. This next Colts drive will start inside their own 15. But a chance to tie or retake the lead when we come back to Lucas Oil. Introducing. Trying to, uh, you know, argue they'd stay in a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, they was just telling me I was down after, like, the second series. And it, it, it wasn't like I was mad, but I just bummed out because you can't let me wear the blue and then, and then let me not keep playing. So, I don't know. It's, it's good, though. We have, we have next week to look forward to. And, and I'm just having a blast being with the guys and, and I don't know, it's just, it's just a crazy, it's crazy being out here, the first preseason game and getting to really run around and showcase what I've been doing in training camp. So, I mean, it's dope. What was the emotion like for you coming into this? This is what you have always dreamed of and you have overcome so much to get to this point and make the NFL debut. Yeah, for now, I mean, this is just in me. Like, this is this is what I do. Like, this is showing, like, I can do this for a long time. But being out there is just a crazy experience. Getting to rush on the other side of Dio, Quiddy. Um, I mean, it's just an an unforgettable experience for sure. You got to Bo Nix. You were pretty effective in the time that you had out there. How good is it to finally be able to get to a quarterback after seeing all those red jerseys in training camp? I mean, shoot, it felt great to really get out there and really try and make a play on the quarterback. Um, Bo Nix, incredible athlete. I mean, I, I was so close to getting that dude, but I mean, it, I mean, the pressure was there and it was it was a blast being out there. What was your biggest takeaway getting your first NFL game action, the biggest difference from the college game? Honestly, I didn't see a huge difference. The pace was just a tad bit faster. Like, the tackles get out to the cell set a tad bit faster, but, I mean, shoot, it, it felt normal to me. It felt like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm made to do this. <laughs> you absolutely are made to do this, proving you belong out there, ready to get back at it next week. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Latu. Appreciate you, Larry. Leatu Latu, Jason Bean out of Kansas. A little single wing football for Bean right I, and left I, and right. Know, I talked about him earlier, and, you know, I, I was a little prophetic here. I mean, I've watched this kid run that zone read, and, I mean, he is lightning with the ball in his hand. He really is. And so it looks to me like they're going to wear that NCAA game out right now. Now, he can throw the football. Yeah, yeah. He had 449 yards passing in their bowl game for Kansas <laughs> last year, which is a Big 12 no. record. No, I, ha I just haven't seen him enough at NF, you know, even in practice on NFL competition on that aspect of it. But there's no question about the foot speed. Now, we'll say this. He has listed as both a quarterback and a wide receiver on the roster. But Bean there throwing it is. this one, and Sluka was the intended target, who is a great story in his own account. We'll try to get to him in a matter of moments. Yeah. But to finish the thought on Bean, he is listed as both a quarterback and a wide receiver, but in training camp at Westfield, he's had the red jersey on and taking nothing but quarterback, nothing but reps quarterback so far. snap. And you saw that speed. When, it, when a guy brings a special trait to the team, you look for ways to keep it. And, you know, he probably would be an ideal practice squad guy to learn how to get the NFL passing part of it because athletically he is special. Lost the oh, football. Lost the football. Can't do that. Did not. Can't do that. Put the football away. Fumble recovered by Matt Henningsen. Yeah, it's just ball security here. The another special third day pick by Ballard, who's the master of the third day. But when he catches punts, I've watched him. There's no coffee grinding. He catches them very smooth. And very, and then he's very elusive. So I, I think we're going to have a guy that really impacts us as we go on. Blake Watson is the tailback. And gets the toss left side. 
taking out of the game about five yards on the play. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a little peek here at Gould right over there on the sidelines. But again, I, I really like guys that catch the ball smoothly. You know, in the past we've had some guys back there, and, and we always worried about are we gonna you know are we gonna secure it. And plus, he has tremendous. He was a 4-3-9 guy. I mean, he's another guy that can take it to the house. Average 16 yards of punt return last season in Corvallis. Second down. Catch made. Tackle made. That's Young on the tackle. Camp Moyer on the grab. Third and short. Yeah, another little stick route. Young does a lot of the same kind of guys in our depth spot. We're very, very solid at 1-2. And then with this kind of kickoff, you might even see it keeping an extra linebacker because of what type of player you want to defend the kickoff with. Watson gets the handoff. And Watson is sent backwards. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Now, Jackie, again, number 58, he's... Go for it on fourth and short if you yeah. remember. Yep, in the happiness season, you'd go for it. He'll get the football to just shy of the nine-yard line. I think Denver's going to call the timeout here, which is exactly what they will do. So while we have this opportunity, we touched on this at halftime, I want to double back on this. Colts fans, you know, frankly, I, I'm kind of partial to you to listen to the post-game show <laughs> on the way home as I'm doing the doubleheader tonight. Once that is over with, Go check out the move. And again, I'll echo your comments. Absolutely. The job that J.J. Stankovic did to put that together is oh, tremendous. It, what will people learn by listening to it, this? It, you, take it from a guy who lived it. It is one of the best productions. I, w I was riveted because there were a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know the background before we came to Indianapolis and all the superstars, political guys that had made it possible. You know, and I did know the Baltimore background. And then, of course, the move itself is a classic. I mean, you know, Jimmy Ursay going with John Scott out of the parking lot in the back seat under a blanket. I mean, you know, stuff that our guys did here. Larry Hall selling tickets. Pete Ward just keep keeping the organization together. It's just, it's just an amazing, you just have to listen to it. it. It's like getting on a sitcom on a day off and getting addicted to it. Colts Audio Network, Apple Pod, Spotify, Amazon Music is where you can find it. Fourth and short. Oh, we jumped. Oh, we jumped. I hope it's not on Johnson. We are in mid-season form on both teams saying it was the other side's fault. Yeah. That applies at every level of football ever. But this looks like it's going against Indianapolis. Nice. Encroachment, defense number 93. It's a five-yard penalty and a first down. Yeah, this is an And when you're that close to it, I've always been amazed at how that can happen. 15 tackles last year for Johnson, his second year with the team. Here's Watson. Toss play left side. Watson, touchdown. Back to a two-score game with 5.55 left to go. Yeah, the, the toss crack the toss crack has just killed us today. We haven't set the edge. We've gotten everybody sealed inside. You know, defense. Kick is up and good. Back to a two-score lead for Denver with 5.55 to play in this preseason opener. You know, our backup defenders just haven't stopped them. They haven't even slowed them down. Okay, end zone. From the goal line at Gould. Gets a seal block from Cleveland, bounces it outside. And will be steered by Lutz towards midfield, but by far the best return for either side of today's game as that one goes for 49 yards. Time for our Citizens Energy Group scoring recap. Four plays, 19 yards, and a minute 56 off the clock. And Gould showed that 4-3-9 right there. He, he showed that speed, which he has legitimately, and he just outran him and set up a short field for us here. Had two punt return touchdowns in his junior season at Oregon State. He was All-American as a kick returner that year. Here's Penix out of the backfield. Yeah, and this, is, this is my pick to Cliff. This is the kid that's under the radar right now. 
I think he really has some talent. Look at, you know, if you look at his body build, he's very thick in the thighs, but he has burst. He has played more tight end than running right, back. Right, right. He's got hands. I mean, this is, this is a kid I think you want to take a good look at. Diving effort made on the grab, and that's Jordan Murray, backup tight end, that grabs the first down catch. Terrific catch right there. Terrific catch. Full in that direction for Denver by Andre Smith. Here it is. Now he's got in picks last fall at Kansas. Drop. Oh, good throw right there. Again, we talked about the key with him is how well can he throw it? Can he throw it at an NFL level? Now this is a good shot. Let's pick up by Scott Fernia. Ethan Fernia, special teams age for his team. His third year with the club makes the grab at the 11-yard line. Great throw and catch. Great throw and catch. I knew Fernia went around this Colts locker room for some time. Hasn't gotten many reps with the first team. Ball start, offense number 84. It's a five-yard penalty. It's first down. Murray a little excited that time. It's first and 15. And Murray's in an uphill battle because, again, the tight end room is so oh, deep. it's deep. It's stacked. And, and right now, it's hard to separate them with the exception of Granson. And Granson is, like I said, he's a hybrid. He's he's a little bit different guy. Tyree Cleveland out there getting some reps as well. Former draft pick of the Broncos playing against his old team. Bean slings it. Treadwell, Treadwell. grabs that one. Touchdown. Former first-round pick by the Vikings eight years ago makes the catch. This is a real good job by you know, Treadwell was a high draft pick that hasn't been able to find it. So, you know, I, again, I thought it was smart by the Colts to bring him in. And the Colts will go ahead and go for two here. And when you've got a quarterback that's a running threat, you like your chances to convert from yeah. two yards out. Two yards out. Edge plays are really, really good. Xavier Scott is the lone setback next to B. Picks. And that is a live ball that can be brought back for two points. And that is the end of the play. Ball was grabbed by Chris Abrams Drain that made that play out for of, the Broncos. Out of Missouri. He was a ball hawk and caller. Now you could practice the onside here. You're behind. You can only do it in the fourth quarter. It doesn't look like they're going to do it but you could it's a regular lineup but this is a situation it's too high in the in the count but this would be a situation where you could announce the onside but the important thing here we got to have really good kick coverage here and we got to have a great stop and get that ball back you know with hopefully get it back with two minutes to go so Schrader again can't onside kick is the only guy within 30 yards. You have to announce it these days. Yeah, got to announce it. Puts it perfectly at the goal line. Tackle made by Denbo right around the 30-yard line. Xavier Scott down to make the play as well. So again, if you are wanting to have an onside kick, it's only up in the fourth quarter, you have to be trailing. And once you declare an onside kick, you cannot change your mind. Cannot In other words, if you mind. see a formation you don't like, yeah. too bad. You got to go kick it. Got to go kick it. I don't know. I, I, right now, I'm having fun with it. I, I really am. It's added something to the game. Need a play here on defense. Need a play. Toss play goes to Watson. And that's a start. Tackle for a loss, and let me talk about that young man that made the play. That is Michael Tutsi yep. from Warren Central High School. Everyone in high school football locally, and frankly, small college football, knows his dad, Steve. Marion University, Warren Central. Michael played at North Dakota State, was a fantastic player for the Fargo, was injured in camp last year, never had a chance to play in a preseason game. How cool is this? You're playing yeah, at Lucas Oil in your hometown. And he's done a good job at the nickel. Now, also, Land did a really good job of forcing it and not just getting sealed down. The second and long. They're going to run. They'll run something quick here just to try to get back. Quick flat out there trying to, oh, miss tackle. And with that, first down and more. And Watson gobbles up all kind of yardage. 
all the way down to the Colts 39 yard line. Yeah, this is this is should be dead right here in the water. This is just a, a, a complete ball three timeouts. You got to use them. Once again, Watson and finds room to run. Young will bring him down, and here comes the timeout Got to use Shane Sykin. Got to use him. So a gain of four on the play. Take a look at the AFC South and some of the matchups that the Colts will have, and Ace as of late. Yep. A lot of the matchups are early. Obviously, the Colts will finish with Houston, but here's some of the yeah. matchups well, that you'll see. You're going to play all three teams in the first six games. This is the most improved division in football. The Texans right now, you know, may be the best team on paper. That's simply on paper because they're going to have an expectation problem. Tennessee has had a really good offseason quietly, but if Levis plays, if Levis plays like they want him, they're going to be tough. And I think Jacksonville will bounce back after a tough year. So it is going to be a challenging week, day in, day out. It's going to be fun, really. Colts open up with Houston here on September the 8th. Watson follows a wall of blockers. Good extra effort, and that should move the chains. It will be a Colts timeout to stop the clock, but yeah, now move the chains for a first we're down. Out of and the thing about it is the running game. We haven't set the line of scrimmage all day. We've been pushed back inside. We've been beat on the edge. We finally made a play by Tutsi uh, earlier here on this drive, but we've been pushed back inside with our backups and our third guys and beat on the edge. So we're a work in progress here on defense in terms of depth. You know, it isn't quite as bright as we as, as we may have thought it was. But you know what you get out of a first game, first game, first preseason game, it, I always call it a baseline game. You, you find out you know, kind of who you are, and then you go to work from there. One more timeout, plus the two-minute warning for the Colts. Colts in, in the 46 defense right there. Ball is oh. out. Watson I think we got it. I think we got time. it. I think we got it. No. Wishful thinking. Denver maintained the football. Levi Bell was the Colt that was closest to it. That is Mustafer looks like it fell on it for Denver. They must improve their offensive line when the games are for real. Uh, you know, they were they were well down the league last year in sacks. And, uh, they, you know, they, they have to pick that up. They think that Nix's ability will help that which watching him it will so last Colts timeout the, the the Denver Broncos were 27th in the league on sacks getting sacked a year ago one timeout left got to stop him got to stop him on the slant catch made and that should just about do it yeah. first down for Denver you just got to smother him at corner. Even if you get a penalty, you just, you know, you're playing a 10-yard field now. You just can't let him get that inside release on you and throw that easy slant. Brandon Johnson had 19 catches last year, including four touchdowns for the third-year player from Central Florida. With, yep. the, with the exception of Mims, as I said earlier in the contest, they are they they really have a priority on on big receivers tall rangy big guys broncos do have to snap this before the two minute warning hence the handoff to watson snared for a minimal gain but bring us to the two minute warning broncos looking to salt this one away as they lead it 34 to 30. in today's game watson the ball carrier and again, a first down ends it. It's looking slight the chances with well, not having a timeout remaining and, through Indianapolis. And as I said earlier, not to be redundant, but if if you're Sean Payton, the staff, and the fan base, you're thrilled to death with Knicks today, with Bo Nix. You're, you're thrilled to death with that. I mean, 
he showed a little bit of everything. He showed athleticism. He showed decisiveness, quick arm, accuracy. You know, they're going to they're gonna feel like that they've got a chance now to move forward. Knicks today, 15 of 20, 125 yards and a touchdown. Coach Payton going to take this down as far as he can before taking the timeout, which he'll do right here. A minute 14 left to play. Both teams now out of timeouts. The Colts will have joint practices with the Arizona Cardinals on Wednesday and Thursday at Grand Park. That starts at 6, six o'clock yeah. both nights. And those are phenomenal. I mean, actually, in the, you know, in the next few days, because, you know, you have two with Arizona, and then you have one at Cincinnati the next week. I mean, those three practices are just absolutely vital to your team's growth. I mean, there's there's really nothing like them. In in some respect, you get you get some elements that are even better than a preseason game, although you don't get the live hitting, and nothing can nothing can match that. Rick and Laird, I'll be back here tomorrow or next Saturday at seven o'clock for Colts and Cardinals, the second oh, of two there preseason you go. games. Toss play, Watson. Stewart comes in, but Watson fights through, does just enough, should move the chains, and it is victory formation time yeah. for the Denver Broncos. That was a great job by Watson. We actually did a decent job, got a little penetration into the soft spot, but, but he hammered it pretty well. Good measure just actually, to make sure. Actually, down, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought they got it, but I say progress was stopped, at least for now. And we will see the first and probably only appearance of the chain gang in today's game. And just know there's going to be a handful of preseason games that will be used with basically Hawkeye technology <laughs> and not with the chain gangs. So you may see that at select preseason games this year. Yep, it's on its way. He is just shot. So this one not over just yet. Not yet. Not yet. 53 ticks. 53 ticks. So no official Colts practice tomorrow or Tuesday. This week, the final week of activity at Grand Park in Westfield. Ten practices that have been open to the public with two more to go. Colts fans have been tremendous. Yeah, and, and Grand Park, uh, it, it, there, there is no finer setting in the NFL. There isn't any question about it. As you said, the fans have been great. It's just a fun experience, uh, it's, and it's just so great. It's so close for everyone. Fourth and inches. Wilson will keep. Shoved backwards. But judging where they are marking this in the side, that's a first down, yeah. and yeah. there will be no need for further activity today. Yeah, I, I, I think he.